Hello everyone, it is Ozilect and I am back to talk about the Tasmanian election of 2024. It is now Tuesday, the election was on Saturday and we have most of the votes counted at 83.5%. I do not believe any votes were counted yesterday and only a little bit on Sunday, so there is still quite a lot to go, but most of the seats have been finalized. So we're going to go seat by seat, starting with Bass, and I'll give my thoughts on what's happening. This is the only seat, Bass, which it's pretty much confirmed what's happening. We've got the Liberal Party on three quotas, the Labor Party on 2.4, Greens almost a quota, and Lambie on 0.65. So Lambie is going to get elected through minor party preferences, I would assume. The Labor Party will miss out because of the fact they have less of a quota and they won't collect these minor party preferences. And the Greens are on not even a full quota themselves and they'll probably collect the remaining like animal justice preference and stuff like that so bass pretty decided already uh it was it was already decided a couple of hours into election night actually it was the most predictable seat in my opinion before the election it has a result of three liberals two labor one green and one jackie lambie so we're going to have Braddon last because that one is the least conclusive result in my opinion clark Clark has two Labour, two Liberal, one Green, but probably two, and one Christie Johnson. The independents in this seat underperformed the polls. A lot of people expected there'd be two independents elected. As you can see here, there's been a swing against independents for some reason. Ben Loberger did have a little bit of a... I mean, he, he didn't run last time. I think he was he's like anti-stadium or something like that. But um, yeah, the independents uh, underperformed. And they'll only get one seat collectively, and it'll probably be Christy Johnson, who was elected last time. But yeah, the Tasmanian Greens and the Labour Party are in the hunt for the last seat. Most people believe that the Greens will get elected because they are starting from a higher quota, but it will all really depend on the preferences of all these minor parties. And of course, the preferences of the Liberal Party overflow here, which is on 0.17% quotas. So it could be Labour, it could be Greens, but... I suspect it's probably going to be the Greens. So next up is Lions. This is a, another seat where the Labour Party could win another seat. They're on 2.64 quotas. The Liberal Party are on three. They're going to win three. Greens are on 0 0.83. They will win one. Uh, but it's between Labour and Jackie Lambie for the last seat. But the Lambie Party will probably win that last seat off of same story as Bass, minor party preferences from Students Fishers Farmers, John Tucker, who is a former Liberal, Animal Justice Party preferences were probably just the, like the last Green. So I think it's pretty straightforward that the Lambie Party will be elected here and it will be the same result as Bass, in my opinion. Uh, so the, but they haven't declared this seat yet uh, on the ABC and other people have, have said it's inconclusive. In Franklin, this is a seat where the Greens could get two seats, but I believe it is more likely for the Liberal Party to get three seats. Labor Party is on two. They actually have a little bit of an overflow, so maybe that will go towards the Greens. David O'Byrne, which is a former uh, independent, is oh, sorry, former Labor who is currently an independent, is probably more likely to soak up that remaining Labor quota, and the Liberal Party will get elected on Jackie the Lambie Network and some minor party preferences. Although I'm not really sure how these minor parties are going to vote. But yeah, um, most people are suspecting the Liberal Party will get three seats here, but the Greens are in with a chance. So the last and final seat is Braddon. Most people are saying that the Liberal Party is a shoe in for four seats here. I think it's not as quite as sh a sure thing as they suggest. I think they're definitely the most likely to get that last seat. The Labour Party are going to get two, Lambie are going to get one. But the Greens and Craig Garland are both in for a chance out of Tasmanian Greens and Craig Garland. I believe Craig Garland is more likely to get the final seat because he, for one, he doesn't have any leakage. He's just one candidate. He doesn't have to rely on preferences from other candidates within his own party because he's just it's just him. Um, so that's one reason. Second reason is because some of these minor parties are probably more likely to support him, like the Shooters Fishers. But the Shooters Fishers farmers' preferences will probably just go to, to Jackie Lampy and get her elected. So 
not not her, but her party. Sorry, she's not. She's actually not running. But one one of her candidates elected. That's what I mean, because we actually don't know which which one of these candidates is is going to get elected. Um, so yeah, Craig Garland, if he's able to to get ahead of the Greens, off of perhaps ungrouped or something like that, you know, animal justice will probably go to the Greens. So so that makes it more difficult. If he's able to somehow get ahead of the Greens then he can collect Tasmanian Greens preferences and get ahead of the Liberal Party. I think it's probably pretty unlikely, but we'll see what happens. Craig Garland has recently come out as an anti-vaxxer, which probably will get him not as much support from Greens voters when it comes to preferences. So the Liberal Party will probably get four seats here. Not too much of a surprise, it is the most conservative seat in Tasmania. This will be the only seat where the Tasmanian Greens miss out on the seat, but they could still win a seat. We don't know the results, but a lot of people have already declared four seats for the Liberal Party here. So if we go into my little uh, app thing, we will start putting in the seats. So Liberal Party, I'm just gonna, I'll just put all the Greens in first because it's just easier. Um, I don't know why I gave them two in lines. So. Uh, oh my god, I should I should just put it in, like, uh, all the liberals in first, really, I should do that, okay, alright, so, Labour Party 2 there, Lambie 1 there, Labour here, Lambie here, Lambie, Labour here, Independent, and then Independent here, and there, okay, alright, so here we go. Uh, this is probably what the parliament is going to look like. This is what most people are suspecting it's going to look like. And probably what's going to happen is the Liberal Party are going to be in a confidence supply agreement with the Lambie Party, where the Lambie Party will not vote on everything the Liberal Party do, but agree to have them in government, agree for the Premier to be Jeremy Rockliffe. So under my suspicion that Craig Garland could get that last seat, this will be, if if, if Liberal Party are only on 14, it will make it a little bit more difficult for them. They'll have to be with not only Lambie, but also a independent. All three of these independents are progressive. I know David O'Byrne is supportive of le at least of the stadium being built, but I know I don't think Jackie Lambie is, so maybe that's a moot point, but it will make things definitely more difficult. But what everybody has been saying is that even if it is more difficult for the Liberal Party, it would be much more difficult for the Labour Party to form government because they would need two coalition partners, either all of the Greens and then Lambie or all of the Greens and then all of the Independents. So it would be more difficult theoretically for the Labour Party, but at the same time, maybe the Labour Party shouldn't have decided that they not don't want to be in minority government completely, which Rebecca White and the Labour Party have said. It was very interesting on election night, Rebecca White left the door open for a possible minority government where maybe she would just get competence to supply. But since then, they have just decided, no, we're not going to do anything. We don't want to do anything. We, we will let the Liberals form government. It's not entirely clear that they have decided that we, they absolutely don't want to be in government. Maybe they'll see what the Liberal Party try to do, and if the Liberal Party completely fail to come to some kind of agreement, they'll swoop in and change their mind. I don't really know. It's, it's, it's basically, at this point, it's like a 90% chance the Liberal Party are going to form government, but it's absolutely not conclusive. And I, I think we should wait until all the results have been finalized, and I think the Labor Party should have waited until all results have been finalized. And as you can tell from my apprehension to talk about this, it was a very messy election. So I want to talk about one theoretical uh, possibility where the Labour Party and the Greens can form government with just them. I don't think this is likely because, as I said earlier, I think Lyons is, is pretty much a shoe in for, for Lambie, uh, getting that last seat. Uh, but the Labour Party could win three seats in Clark, and then the Greens could win two seats in Franklin uh, in expense of the Liberal Party, and then the Greens could theoretically win uh, their seat in Braddon uh, at expense of the Liberal Party as well. So in this situation, the Labour Party can form uh, government with just the Greens, 
theoretically in a competent supply agreement because the Labour Party have in their rules that the uh, in a minority government they can't have any non-Labour Party people as min in ministerial cabinet roles. So they can't even do a competent supply agreement where they put in people as ministers, which I think they've apparently done in South Australia. And it, it's just a, a thing that happens sometimes. It's, it's a bit unusual, but it is a thing that happens sometimes. So it really doesn't leave them with much options because I feel like the Greens would probably not want to be in a government if they don't have any ministerial positions when they literally have half 50% of the amount of, of members in the government, six out of 18 um, of the Labour Party. So I, I, I don't think this is likely and I don't think the Labour really want to work with the Greens anyway, even if they only have to work with the Greens. I think probably the only way for the election to have gone Labour's way would if Labour would have would have if Labour would have somehow been able to form government with just the Labour Party in a competence supply agreement. So they missed out on that. They decided, all right, we're not going to bother with this. It's going to be too complicated. This traffic light coalition thing, or even if it's only just with the Greens, it's going to be too much with, for them. I mean, I mean, there's still there's also a chance they could form government with just. Greens and then one independent or something like that, you know, like they don't have to, have to rely on Lambie or something like that. There's still a chance of that at this point, of course. Um, so, but they decided it's too complicated for them. It's too much of a mess. We're going to let the Liberals deal with this because the Liberals are going to have a really hard time having to be in government with Jackie Lambie. I don't think Jeremy Rockliffe is the greatest in negotiation. So they're just going to let Liberals do this. They're going to let the Liberals flounder. And then they're going to come back in a couple of years and maybe win a couple more seats and then maybe they can form government with just the Jackie Lambie network or a couple of independents or something like that. So that's their plan. I, I, I get it. A lot of people were disappointed with the Labour Party, but I sort of understand why they've done what they've done. They, they did say throughout the election campaign that they won't do deals with people and they won't get into minority governments and they've, they've fulfilled on that. I think the Liberal Party said that they, that they were open to it, but they don't want to compromise on any policy and they're going to have to compromise on policy. That's, that's just the way it works. Uh, but I do think that in the future, the Labour Party has to accept that they will probably have to get into minority governments. Uh, same as the Liberal Party, they'll have to accept that because getting majority government in Tasmania is going to be harder, not, not only under a 35 member system because there is that lower quota, but also just generally with the anti-Labour Party trend, sorry, anti-major party trend. It is, it has been an anti-Labour Party trend, but it has been an anti-major party trend, both statewide and federally, that's been going on in the last couple of decades. So they have to get used to the idea of, we cannot form government as a majority by ourselves. We have to work with people. Uh, I just think the Labour Party wished that they could just work with like some independents or, or Lambie. They don't want to work with Greens because they believe that greens are like a poison to them like what with what happened in i believe it was 2010. so uh that's the result it's going to be a liberal minority government at least for a little while until some until it falls apart and there'll be an early election or something like that um i i suspect so i just want to before we go talk a little bit about the polls so the polls have uh been pretty accurate this election uh, which is a surprise because it's Tasmania and most people think Tasmanian polls are, are not very accurate. And also the last opinion poll was like two weeks ago. So um, the only thing that was kind of in inaccurate was that they overestimated the independent vote in Clark and I guess underestimated Labour in Clark, if we can get to Clark. Here we go. So yeah, Labour did a bit better and the independents did a bit worse. So that was the big difference. And I, I think maybe also overestimated the independent vote a little bit in lines too like john john tucker didn't really seem to have a chance in the end but apart from that yeah the polls were actually pretty good both kevin bonham's and my prediction was pretty accurate so yeah um a bit surprising that even two weeks before the election the polls can be can be pretty accurate uh, and i ended up winning a little bit of money as well just from following what the my interpretation of what the polls uh were saying and, and, and stuff um but yeah, I think that looking at uh, the swing against the Liberal Party and the swing towards Labour and the Greens, very small swing, but and then the combined primary vote of Labour and the Greens 
on 42%. I think the Labour could have argued for a mandate to form government. They've just decided they don't want it because they think it's going to be too chaotic and they just want to let the Liberals kind of fall down. So that's what it comes down to. The Liberals uh, claim victory on the night. A lot of people were saying they shouldn't have done that, but it looks like it was the right thing to do because the Labour Party have handed uh, this election to the Liberal Party to somehow uh, form government. Uh, and let's see how it goes. Thank you for watching, everybody. Goodbye.